want to film another video for you guys showing you how to properly check a cylinder, see if it's round, see if it can just be honed, and what tools are needed for that. If you guys like these videos, please like them, share them, um, and subscribe to the channel, please. Uh, I have some cool ideas to do with this channel to help guys out how to rebuild their skis, how to check everything properly. And to do it, I need your guys' help. So this cylinder came here from a customer. They actually had a water leak on their ADA head. So they got a set of O-rings. They popped the head and they noticed there was actually some light detonation around the piston um, with some damage had a light seizure. So he brought it to me to see if we could just lightly hone it um, and send it back on its way. You know, the bores don't look that bad when you look at them by eye, but eye really doesn't tell you anything. You always hear these tales where like, oh, if the groove, you can't put your finger in it, it's good. Um, stuff like that, honestly, all that's bullshit. The only real way to know what's going on with this stuff is measuring it. Measuring tools are fairly expensive. You know, this is a sun and bore gauge and bore gauge setting tool. Uh, you know, this setup's about $3,000 just for these two. It's kind of insane. Nobody normal is going to buy that just for playing in their garage. But there's cheaper sets. You know, this Fowler, you know, you can get for $175 bucks, and there's even cheap China ones for under $100 that work great. So you end up needing a micrometer to measure the piston and then a bore gauge to set it off of it. So basically what you end up doing is you end up measuring the piston, you measure it about three quarters of an inch, half an inch to three quarters of an inch from the bottom. And that's going to give you what your piston diameter is. From there, now I take this number and I set it into this tool and I set my bore gauge off of this as you can see it reads zero if I set this in here it's also going to read zero hard to do one-handed but you get the idea um, you can very easily just set this with this and that's all you need um, all you're really doing, the number doesn't actually matter. You're doing a comparison between the piston and the cylinder. That is your cylinder clearance. On a cast piston, you know, three and a half to four and a half thousandths is what you want. The other thing on a used engine that you have to be really careful of is that the cylinder is still round. So what ends up happening is the piston rings on these things is a hardened metal. That isn't going to turn egg shape so that radius is going to stay whether it opens or closes so when the cylinder gets egg shape you end up getting blow by so when you look at this piston here which this is the one that's not damaged you can actually see all the exhaust gas that has gone past both rings onto the piston that's the first sign that your bore is egg shape this is the good hole not the bad hole Obviously on the bad hole, which had ring damage, you can see how excessive it is. So when we take this, when we go, we check in this direction, in this direction, we are six thousandths. So, which is excessive, but still within spec. Pistons rock this way across the pin, all right? so. Normally, the way a cylinder wears is the front and the rear wear more because the piston's rocking this way. It's normally at the top and the bottom of the stroke where the piston's changing direction. This way and this way is normally much tighter of a tolerance. So when we check here, here we are four thousandths. So this hole is two thousandths egg shape already too much this is the good hole which we would have assumed that we could just put a new piston in and we'd be good to go now the bad hole that detonated when we check it we are five and a half and in the other direction another four so 
this hole is actually less egg shaped than this hole. Odds are the reason this piston detonated and the other didn't, the cylinder's egg shape more on this side. So this side had blow by which actually lowered the compression enough for this hole not to detonate, but this hole did. So when you look at this motor, you'd say, oh, this hole's great. We need to hone this hole, fix it, and we're good to go. In that aspect, you end up with a motor that's less than optimal condition. You know, when you end up honing this stuff, you always get guys that say, well, what's the best hone to buy so I have it in my shop? What I always tell people is there's no reason to buy a hone until you buy a micrometer and a bore gauge and you learn how to use it. There's no reason to put a honing tool in a cylinder if you haven't measured it first. If it's already worn out, all you're doing is asking for issues. You know, if you have a worn out hole and you hone it and you don't even know how much you're removing from that as you do it, you run the risk of actually breaking the skirts of the piston because when there's too much rock, this piston's going to rock as it changes direction at the top and at the bottom. When there's too much rock, especially in a cast piston, they're very brittle. These end up cracking off right here. Going into the crank, you end up with a total loss of your engine. You know, when it comes to hones, you know, after you've bought a micrometer and a bore gauge, you know, you could probably pick both up for 150 bucks if you're going on the cheap side, or, you know, if you go into the thousands, depending on how serious you are at getting it, then you're going to look at a hone. There's several different types of hones. Um, these two are rigid hones, Sun and AN rigid hone. This is a Listley rigid hone, a standard deglazing hone, and a ball hone. These deglazing hones, which you normally see at Harbor Freight or many of the different automotive stores, you know, Pep Boys, whatever, for a two stroke cylinder, they're crap. You know, the the stones end up getting stuck inside the bore. They really don't serve you any purpose. These, if you want to put a light cross hatch on them and the cylinder has checked out already, this is the first thing I have to say, it's got to check out before you start honing it. When you put a hone in a cylinder, it's basically sandpaper, you're removing metal. If the cylinder is too loose and you remove metal, it's going to cause issues. So, you know, some people just want to send it. I don't recommend that. Um, if you want to size something, these hones, especially this one, which is a Sun and AN hone, you can go up, you know, a quarter millimeter, half a millimeter. You can go up three millimeters if you want to sit there all day honing it. Um, this is the most precise way to size a hole. Um, after you bore a cylinder, you basically bore a cylinder to the size of the piston. And then you hone the clearance. So if it's a cast piston, you know, three and a half to four and a half thousandths, depending on the bore size. If it's a forged piston, it's normally five to six and a half, depending on the bore size. So you'd end up boring it, you know, to zero, zero, even with a piston, and then honing the extra out of it with this. Um, this is a manual hone. So this you would end up connecting to a drill. It's a fairly easy way to do it. Same with this. These work great as well. Um, they wear out a little quicker and because the guide is actually felt instead of aluminum, they wear out significantly faster and they don't keep the bore as round. You know, then if you want to step up from there, you can go to what we basically use, which is a, you know, full honing machine, you know, and honestly, you really can't beat it. As you can see, when you're running a honing machine like this, you know, there's multiple stones, multiple grits. As you hone, you end up wanting to use several different grits to have the perfect surface for the rings to see so it doesn't take a prolonged time for it to break in. So, well, that's basically all I got for you guys today. Hope you liked the video. Um, if you did like it, please like this video, share it, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for checking us out.